Getting into PC gaming, especially if it's your first time building a PC, can be quite a daunting task. And people like me, we overclock our machines and go into all these intricate settings that may confuse you. But today is going to be a very simple and easy guide on how you can build your first PC. What we've got on the table here is a mid-range gaming PC. And for new parts, it's actually some of the best value for money you can get. Running through the list here, we've got a one terabyte hard drive from Seagate, a H310M motherboard from Asus, an i3-8100, eight gigabytes dual channel DDR4 memory kit, VS450 power supply from Corsair, Galax GTX 1060, and a Speco 4 case from Corsair. And now not only in today's guide will I take you through a step-by-step -step process on how you can build your PC, I'll also post time links in the description below for each step in the way. And on top of that, I will show you how you can get a cheap Windows 10 key and install that on today's machine too, thanks to today's video sponsor, SCD Keys. So what are we waiting for? Let's build this thing. So first things first, you're going to want to put all your PC parts here on the table, laid out, and know what you're working with. For this, you'll also need a screwdriver and a pair of scissors. I recommend those tools as well. And then the first thing we're going to do is we're going to move across to the motherboard here. And as the name suggests, this is the mother of the whole build. Host your CPU, host your memory, also host your graphics card, and your hard drives plug into these SATA connectors here. So let's start putting this together. So the first thing we're going to do is put the CPU in. So we just get this lever here, push it down, and then pull to your right. And then it should come up like that. And so we get our CPU from the package here, and we just install that in the socket. So we have to be very careful. So we put it in like that. There should be little dimples on the side of the CPU and also an arrow to indicate where it goes in correctly. And after we've done that, we can then push the lever down and make sure it's under this little screw here. And then we can push this side lever down with our right hand. And this plastic clip should pop off as well. So now it's time to install our CPU cooler. So all we do for this is line up the little four holes here with the motherboard, and then we push diagonally down. And diagonally down again. And so now our CPU cooler is installed. And all we have to do too is then now plug this four pin connector to the top of the motherboard like that. And we don't have to worry about any thermal paste because this cooler actually has thermal paste already pre-applied. And now it's time to install our DDR4 system memory. So we just grab these two clips on the dim slots here, push them outwards, and then grab the memory, and then simply match that up like that and push it in on both of the edges and do the exact same thing for your next stick of memory. Bang, done. It's time to prep the build as I call it. So we're going to take this side panel off here on our Corsair case and then we're going to install our power supply and also our SSD and hard drives too. So now installing the power supply first, we simply have the orientation like this, where since there is breathable space in the bottom of the case, we have the fan facing down. And so here we just put it in like that, and then we can simply just screw it off to the rear here. And as Warcraft 3 peasants would say, Job's done. Time to install our SSD and hard drive. So we can just take out these two trays here. And you'll also notice there is a little box with this tray as well. This is simply for our uh, screws to install later on with the motherboard. So we put that aside for now. And also it will have our screws to install our drives too. So first off here we have the hard drive and this doesn't generally need any screws. All we do is we line up these three little holes here with the side of the hard drive and we install it like so. And that's all you have to do. And then you can put that back in the system and then we can get on now to our SSD. And here we're going to install the SSD. This time we will need screws. There is four uh, SSD screws included with that previous box that we pulled out of the drive tray. And we just simply screw off all four ends and job's done. So 
time to install the motherboard and also the input output shield. So that's that little metal shield that's included with the motherboard. So we want to simply put it in here from the inside of the case and just push that on all four corners until it's clicked in. The next step here is to install the motherboard and we simply place it down over the uh, alignment of screws and also underneath our IO shield, just like that. And now it's time to screw it in and the screws for this will be the motherboard screws included with the box. And I'll quickly show them on camera for you so you know which screws they are. And then we just simply screw off the motherboard into the case. So after installing the motherboard, I sometimes, depending on the orientation for simplicity purposes, we're just going to install the graphics card first. So we take out these two side PCIe brackets here. And also at the rear of the case, there is an extra bracket that we take off so we can install our graphics card. Now with the graphics card, we can install it in the top PCIe slot here. So we line that up like so. And that should click in place and slot in. Then after that, we now screw the graphics card back into the side slot here with the two screws that are already used to take off the PCIe protection brackets. So now that we've completed the most difficult part of building the PC, it's time to hook up all these cables, all the front panel cables, and also the hard drives to everywhere they need to go. So the first thing I like to do is remove the rear panel. So now there should be two SATA cables included with your motherboard box. So we want to actually hook these up to the drives themselves, just like that. There should be two SATA connection points and then simply route them through the rear hole here in the case. So now once you've routed them through, you can simply plug them into the motherboard like so. And now we can work on getting our front cables, which is this right here, installed to the motherboard as well. So this here is your USB 3 cable. This will go into the USB 3 slot on the motherboard right here. And now you have your audio cable, which will go over to the right of the build right here. And that's your front panel microphone and headphone jacks. And then you've got the rest of these little cables here. They are your power and lights for your front panel. So they will get hooked up to the bottom of the case, usually on the right of the motherboard here. After installing the data cables, it's time to route our power cables to the rear of the case. And then we're going to do also a little bit of cable management in this build too, since we do get four included zip ties. So untangle all your cables like so. And we will need our 24 pin motherboard connector. And we just pull that through the underneath here on the bottom hole. And also our CPU eight pin. We can pull that through the rear of the case like so. And then do the same for a six pin PCIe VGA connector, which will be this one here. And then lastly, you will need some SATA power connectors. So we'll pull those through as well. Start routing these power cables each to where they need to go. Our SATA cables will simply plug in the rear of our hard drives like so. And then that is now finished. And also while we're here, we can quickly zip tie off these cables that we won't need and also 
insert them like so. So we've also done a little bit of cable management to make things look a little bit cleaner. And while we're at it, since there is our front panel fan connector here, we'll also untie that and route that through the bottom of the case where our SATA cables came through too. Now our next step is to route through the motherboard connector here. So that'll go in the middle slot like so. And also while we're at it, we can route through our PCIe connection, which will go in the one just below that. And also our CPU 8 pin connector, which can go through the top here. At the front of the case, we can start plugging in the cables to where they need to go. 24 pin will go on the right of the motherboard here. And you just simply line that up. Now we've got the PCIe connection here. That'll just go, since it's a six pin, we only need the six pin portion of it. We can then just simply plug that in like so. So now the top of the case, since we only need a four pin connection up here, we can then separate the four pin and plug that in here like so. Now the final cable to hook up is the fan on the front panel and since there's only two fan headers on this motherboard we actually have to un uninstall the front top fan header here and put the front panel fan to this header up here like so and then reroute this one to the back right header here like that. Now the build technically is complete. We could fire this up and everything should boot absolutely fine. However, you notice that all these cables are really messy and they're really ugly. So since we do have three zip ties left, we'll now just clean up the cables on both the front of the case and on the rear of the case in a couple of minutes. And now that we've completed the build, it is time to install Windows 10, and it's a very easy process. All you'll need is an eight gigabyte or larger USB flash drive. Simply plug that in, and in the link in the description below, it'll take you directly to today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, where you can get a legitimate X64 Windows 10 Pro license for as little as $12 after you use the Tech yes City coupon code, which is also in the description below. So just click the link, add that to your cart, and then you can apply the coupon code, or of course, you can get Windows 10 wherever you wish to, but this is a very cheap method. It's very safe as well as this website does accept various forms of payment. I always prefer to use PayPal. That way I don't have to give away my credit card details over the internet. PayPal is extremely safe too. And so after you've done this, you can buy the key and it'll give it to you and you can go to the Windows 10 website, enter the key, and then you can create with our USB flash drive a bootable Windows 10 Pro, which we can then, after we've created this disk, insert into the new PC, simply boot it up, and then it'll launch into the Windows installation. And we insert that key that we used from SCD keys, put that in, and we're now ready to install Windows and we're good to go. Now that Windows 10 is finally installed, it is time to start playing games. But of course, I do recommend going to Nvidia's website if you're using a GTX 1060 like I did today, getting the latest graphics card drivers. And also if you have time, I do recommend optimizing Windows to make it that little bit faster. I do have an optimization guide, which I'll put the link in the description below, or I'll put a little link up here that you can click in the video itself. And after all is said and done, it is now time for you to start playing games on your brand new PC. I hope you enjoy the PC gaming experience.
And that's pretty much it when it comes to building a PC. It really is that simple. It's not that difficult of a task. Though if you do have any questions or comments, then be sure to drop a comment in the comments section below. And also if you enjoyed this tutorial, then be sure to hit that like button too. But what we got here now is a very quiet gaming PC that uses under 40 watts idle on the desktop. Also when we're playing titles, it was going up to 190 watts usage in Project Cars 2, which is a very demanding title, but also shows you how efficient this build is here too. So if you want to build something similar to this, then I'll put the links in the description for all the parts that I used. And also if you want to get a cheap Windows 10 Pro CD key, 64 bit, then I'll put the link in the description below for that too. You can get a discount if you use the Tech Yes City coupon code too. And with that said, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye. And that should click in place and slot in. Then after that, we now screw the graphics card back into the side slot here with the two screws. And then the last cable we're going to do is install that fan that we previously routed through. And we actually have to actually, 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 and then actually. <laughs> should be two SATA cables included with your motherboard box. And so we want to hook these up to the SATA connection points right here and here.